All right, we're back. Boys in the Sip show. Blah, 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 blah. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Don't just do it by my part. Okay, here we go. Right here. Welcome back to the Boys in the Sip show. Brought to you by Mac Hike Jackson. If you need a car, go see Mac Hike. They're the best there is. Today... I got a special guest, Mr. Randy Watkins, one of the best golfers to ever come out of the SIP. That's all you need to know. Let's get into it. Oh! 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 Come on, baby! Oh! I just can't explain how happy I am to have him here. Uh, we... We kind of talked over a dove hunt. Uh, <laughs> we were at our good buddy Coleman Coleman Connell's dove hunt this year, and we always go to that, and it's always fun. And uh, I said, "Look, Randy, I gotta I gotta have you on the podcast um, because you know we both love golf, we both love Mississippi." And he said, "Man, anytime you let me know, and we'll set it up." And we got him here, and you know, Randy Watkins, uh, he. Uh, Played at Ole Miss. He was all American. Played on the PGA Tour. I can go on and on about his golf stuff. He he owns three golf courses in Mississippi, yeah. Whisper Lake, uh, Lake Caroline, Patrick Farms, and just started one of his, uh, I guess, one of his jewels that he really loves is his loop. And we're gonna get into all that. But Randy, you know, glad to have you on. Just uh, tell me tell me a little bit, uh, you know, your golf history and just you know maybe a little bit how you got started and we'll just get into it like that. You got it. Thanks Ronnie. Appreciate you having me. That was yeah. the dove hunt, you know, as you stated, is something else. Yeah. I tell Coleman all the time, I'd rather stay on his farm and spend the night than any five star hotel I've ever been. Nothing more peaceful and it's quiet. The best. And it's just, it's the best guys. It's the best stuff. It's part of Mississippi again, you That's know, it's right. just Mississippi people together doing what Mississippians do and it's fun and, I'm I'm lucky for that. The friendships I've made through golf. This is one of the things right. I love about golf. It's a long list yep. of things I love about golf, but it's the people and the friendships that I have all over the country. Um, most of them from here. You know, my best friends are here, but you just make friends through golf. And yep. I got started early through my dad, my grandfather. Both were golfers, not good golfers, but golf lovers, and um, I fell in love quick. At age 10, really, the first time I hit a golf ball, I hit it with yep. a three-wood, and I hit it, and I remember it today that I liked the way it felt, and I liked everything about being at a golf course. I liked how pretty it was. I liked yep. how neat and clean it was, and being outdoors with your dad and your granddad. Can't beat it. You know, you just can't beat that. Yeah. And, uh, it wasn't long after that where I – advanced past just playing with them that i started pursuing golf and playing with other kids and david allen and i were best buddies growing up and we played millions of holes together at the country club of jackson and got hooked and started playing some competitive golf had some early success and um i was still playing baseball at the time which i still love the game i still yep. think it's a great game Same for here. boys i think it's the greatest game ever for boys to play but as a team sport. Yeah. And um, I sort of got a, uh, a taste of it. I, I lost the future Masters in a playoff in Dothan, Alabama yeah, when I was great 14 tournament. years old. It's, uh, at that time, it was one of the majors. That's it. It still is, but it was. It's gone down since. At but... that time, the U.S. Junior, the PGA Junior, the future Masters, and the insurance, National Insurance Youth Classic were the yep. four majors. And at 14, I lost it in a playoff, but the. The Georgia coach was there um, in Dothan and watched me play and gave me a little bit of attention and then started tracking me. If I played in the tournament, he showed up, and that's mighty young mm -hmm. to start looking. But I felt, you know, well, maybe I'm getting somewhere. And, and then um, when I was 15, I won the National Junior Championship at, at, down in Disney World. It was a three-stage qualifier, and I yep. got through all that. And... Um, Want it wire to wire, and and uh, buddy, my you know my <laughs> gates opened up yeah. after that, and, and um, from then on, it was recruiting and and picking and choosing schools, and 
dropping baseball and yep. dedicating totally to golf. And when did you drop baseball? Uh, really, I was playing all the way into high school. Yeah, and I, I pitched, so I didn't have to play every day. And yeah, I, the principal was my golf coach, so I had a I had a little leverage with the baseball coach. If I yeah. needed to go to golf practice and not baseball, I I did that. And but you could hit it. I heard. I That's could. Where the, uh, when I was young, I was a pretty good little baseball nickname, player. Nickname Bigum. Bigum. That Bigum. Bigum. I had. This was another. <laughs> I've had so many adult men take an interest in my life. But my little league baseball coach was a guy named Johnny Mac Timms. Who yeah. Was a, who was a great football player at Mississippi State, but he was a big giant man, and his son and I were best buddies and. He took an interest in me as a little leaguer, and and I pitched for him, and he made me big, and I was bigger than most kids. And and then after little league, I went to pony league, and my coach was Harper Davis, the old famous Millsap baseball coach, mm-hmm. um, who was a great man but a golf lover. Mm-hmm. So we would go to baseball, and then he and I would go to Colonial and play nine holes together. So I'm playing with these people, these neat guys that were successful, athletic. Mm-hmm. Um, sports-minded men that took an interest in kids, and I got lucky with that. And my baseball coach in high school was Lamont Eccles, who was one of the historically great baseball coaches in the Jackson metro area. And he just let me sort of do whatever. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to be a part of a team sport because, as you know, even on a golf team, it's a very individual yes. sport because the fact of the matter is you spend more time trying to beat your teammates than you do anybody else. Correct. You want to be the best, and then when you go to a tournament, you want to play with the best of that team. Mm-hmm. So if you're the number one seed on your team, you play with the number one seed from Alabama, Georgia, Florida, LSU, whomever. Yeah. So that was sort of part of my deal. Then um, I got through the recruiting process, and I went to visit uh, Georgia first, and then I went to Florida, then I went to North Carolina, South Carolina, and Texas were my five. You only mm-hmm. get five. And – uh I pretty much my, made up my mind I was going to go to Georgia. He'd been with me since I was 14. He was great. Georgia is great. Yep. I've got family roots in Georgia, so it was an easy commitment. So I did. I signed an SEC letter of intent with Georgia. And then when that came out in the newspaper, the Ole Miss people pitched a fit. At the time, the golf program at Ole Miss was, you know, it was not much at mm-hmm. all. But, that you couldn't really call it a program. Yeah. Didn't have a practice facility. They didn't have a lot of things. But Warner offered and Steve Sloan, uh, Steve was the head football coach at the time, but he was also assistant AD. They came to my home and just said, we'll do whatever you think we need to do to build a program if you'll come. Gotcha. Which they didn't have a driving range. They built a driving range. They didn't have a coach. They hired Ernest Ross. Yep. And who was great. And he was my coach. And – a tournament schedule. Their tournament schedule was pitiful. They, you know, they the furthest they traveled was like Monroe yeah. to play in La Monroe's tournament. So they did everything they ever they said they would do, and it worked out best. One of the best decisions of my life. And it, but it was difficult to back out yeah. of my commitment to Georgia because mm-hmm. I was so invested with their coach and vice versa. And my dad gave me a piece of advice that stuck with me forever. He said, "Look, you can't screw this up." George is one of the top two or three golf schools in the country. Yeah. We love Georgia. We love Coach Copas. But if you think you want to live in Mississippi, mm-hmm. you need to stay in Mississippi. Yeah. Because if you go to Georgia and you have a good career and you come back here and you want some money to advance to the tour, try to get to the tour and play professionally, yeah. they're going to send you right back to Georgia. Yeah. Go get the money from Georgia. You turned your back on us. Got you. You stay and go to Mississippi and support Mississippi. And it could have just as easily been Mississippi State. It just happened to be Ole Miss. Yeah. The people in Mississippi will take – they'll help you mm-hmm. because you stayed here, stayed loyal. And nothing has ever been more true. Yeah. The minute I uh, left Ole Miss and I turned pro and I needed financial support help, it took about 10 minutes. Yeah. And it was that loyalty of Mississippi that – was embedded in me through that that one decision mm-hmm. and the proof that the Mississippi people want Mississippians to do well and will help them yep. and help me forever. And so every step of my professional life, my connection to Ole Miss has been involved in every one of them without exception. Yeah, I get a job. It was an Ole Miss when I got the job at Castlewood as the head pro. Zach Hedman was an Ole Miss grad. He was going to hire somebody from Ole Miss. 
when I needed a business partner to build my own courses, my business partner was an Ole Miss grad. It was just every turn. Mm -hmm. And so I tell kids that all the time. If you're good enough to be recruited to play SEC sports, period, not just golf, and you're offered here, stay in Mississippi, yeah. help us, help our schools. I don't care which one it is. Go to state, go to Southern, go to Ole Miss, stay here. Promote Mississippi, help Mississippians go forward. You'll be paid back for that. And it's just tr a true statement. But that's part of my affection for Mississippi. Yeah, that makes so much sense. You know, when, when we get, you know, there's still a lot of good players that leave. Uh, they do, and, and, and I, opportunities I, I get them. I mean, I think uh, you just made such a good point. Um, I've never kind of really thought about it like that, but I, I've seen, like right now, Hunter Logan comes out of Mississippi State. We, he's been playing golf with us, you know, for a while now. Yeah. And um, my buddies, all my buddies, are they're backing him, you know. And it's just he's he stayed at Mississippi State. He's one of the best kids yep. you will ever meet. I actually came out. Good little story, you know. You you hosted the uh, first stage of Q School out yep. at Lake Caroline. Yeah, and I'm I'm ashamed to say this because of, of as much golf as I played in around Mississippi, I've never played Lake Caroline. Wow. And so, but he calls me. He's ten under par, and he calls me on Friday, the last round, and he's been carrying his bag. And he calls me. It was nine o'clock. He teed off at ten twenty. He goes. Uh, you want to come caddy for me? And I was like, are you tired? Or, you know, you're, you're yeah. doing good. Like, what's yeah. going on? He's like, man, he said, um, you know, these rounds take forever out on, on those type situations. You know, it's just, it just is what it is. People don't understand. Um, he said, so I'm getting, I got really bored out there yesterday and not having anybody to talk to. I know um, it'll help to have somebody to talk to during down the stretch or whatever situation we might be in. And, um, you know, and, of course, uh, fatigue is the fourth, fourth round. I said, I'll be there, man. Mentally fatigued. Yeah. I said, I'll be there. And uh, what I learned real quick about Lake Caroline was there is some hard golf holes. It, there's, some, there's some easy golf yeah. holes. But that stretch – Coming down 14, 15, 14 16, 18. 17, 18, <laughs> I was nervous. And you could tell he was 12 under. And I knew I, he never asked the number. But I'm looking at the number is going to be seven. And um, 14, he makes an unbelievable par. He, he likes to hit driver. And the golf course is firm. Yep. So And there's trouble out there. It yeah. might be – It's not. I'm not saying it's overly tight. But when the golf course gets firm, it makes it's it tighter. tighter. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, – Anyway, he almost hits out of bounds of 14. It stays in. 15, he, he, he lays up. He could have gone for it easy, but he lays up and makes par. Then 16, that's a monster. Four, par, par four. Par four, yeah. Yes. And uh, he hits it in the water. Hits a good one, but uh, he hits in the water off the tee, makes double. And then we're sitting on 17 tee box. And I, get, I walk around there like I told you, I've never seen it. I said, that's a golf hole. 214 yards and it is all carry and the wind's blowing wind was howling right to left yep and uh he hits in the water and i'm like oh. but but he you know he stayed so calm and he ends up getting up and down making bogey on uh, too so he's got he's sitting at nine under and the number was seven so you know he had iron off tee and he make you know makes it on through but that uh just seeing that golf course for the first time and um i played all the other ones and i was like man this i don't hit the ball very straight off the tee that's always been my weakness i was like and i don't this isn't one i want to be playing coming down the stretch <laughs> you better have your stuff buttoned up coming yeah, down coming down stretch it's, a little wind and firmness it's it's got some easy stretches in but at the end yeah, you know, it all comes together on the last five holes correct you got to get your work done early, early. and then hold on Correct. Uh, to get to get through in a tour school, one one of the reasons why the tour likes that place, yeah, is because of the competitive balance of the golf course. It allows yeah. them to shoot low scores, but you got to earn it. Correct. Coming in, I mean, you can you can get under par a good bit yep. through the first. You 12 better holes, get there though. But you better do it because you're gonna need a little help along the way because they changed sixteen to a par four. It's a par yep. five for our members. Yeah. 
And so I've had a, a couple of guys that played in and asked me, what's the hardest hole out here? Yeah. Um, and we'd say 14 generally. Yeah. For our members, and they said, "Well, Sherlock seems like sixteen is harder." I said, yeah. well, it's par five for our members. They went, "Oh, that's a big difference." Yeah, but it is a great par it's four. I mean, beast. it's a great par five, but but I it's mean, a beast of a four for for a tour golfer. Yeah. That that's a perfect little par four. And see, Hunter's a a, a a perfect example of a young guy. Probably, I don't know who recruited him. Yeah, but had he gone to Auburn, mm -hmm. say, I'm just picking a school. Yeah. And done the same. He had a good career at Mississippi State. He was a good player yep. and a high achiever in college. Had he gone to Auburn, the same opportunities here would not have come to him. But because he stayed here, went to Mississippi State, played and played well and performed well and was loyal to Mississippi, he got help pretty quick. And yeah. he has support in Mississippi from Mississippians. And it's not just Mississippi State people. Mm-hmm. I pull for, for Hunter Logan. Uh, no doubt. Ole Miss people, Mississippians pull for Mississippians, particularly if you've stayed low when you had an opportunity to not be. Yeah, correct. That's a big that's correct. a big difference. And not saying they still won't, but, but it's not it, the same. It's, it's not the same. It is not the same. Because we got, you know, we, we got some good ones out there right now. I mean, oh. I know uh, – Wilson Furs, your your boy, yeah, and he's been he's been with you for a while. I Long think. Long time, yeah. Uh, Great and friend. And I've I've never. I mean, I've seen him play. I've never really got to meet him, but I I've, I've seems like a good good dude. Great guy. And, great great guy. And he, I think he's more on the lines of, uh, you know, he was an athlete. A hundred percent athlete. Baseball, pick football. A, pick a sport. He yeah. was going to be good at it. Good at it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think he was like starting quarterback at. At, at, where do you go, J.A.? J.A., yeah. Yeah, and then he was so good at golf, I think he finally had to choose. Kind of like, Pretty much. You know, and, and you love, you find out what you love and the difference on boys in particular, mm -hmm. but girls are now more this way now. The separator is, and I ask kids all this time, do you really like golf? Yeah. Or do you love golf? Yeah. And I'll say, I'll give you an example. You like your uncle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're really crazy about your uncle. Yeah. But you really love your dad. Yeah. So you'd rather spend time with your dad. No. Yeah. Because you love him. You really like your uncle. He's mm -hmm. cool. He's fun. He does cool stuff. But you love your dad because you, you trust him. Yeah. And you can count on him. My instance was I loved it because I could count on golf being the same every day. Yeah. It's, it's, it seems unfair. Many times, yeah, as a golfer, but it's the most fair thing in the world. You get a good shot, you get a good result. You yeah. get a bad shot, you get a bad result. You either play good or you play poorly. Yeah, no excuses, no nothing. And I was raised in a, in a by a dad that was intolerant of excuses. And I give yeah. you an example. My dad, one time, I I played poorly in a tournament. I made a double at the Country Club of Jackson, and it was sort of late in the round. And he said, "What happened on 15? I said, "Well." I got a bad lie in the bunker, and I hit it over the green. He goes, hold, hold. He said, hold on. So was the bunker's fault? Yeah. And I said, no, no, sir. He goes, where were you aiming that shot that you hit in the bunker? I said, yeah. in the middle of the green. I said, oh, the bunker was in the middle of the green? <laughs> I said, no, sir, it was short and right. He goes, okay, well, then that's your fault. Yeah. Yep. Don't blame the bunker. He was completely intolerant of yep. You three putted because the greens are fast. When did you know the greens are fast? Yeah. Did you find out before you teed off, or did you wait to number fourteen to decide they're fast? Yeah. You would. You have to adapt to the greens. The greens are not going to adapt to you. They don't know you. Correct. You have. That's your job. Yep. What are the greens like before you go? And if nothing else, at least on the first hole, you know. Yeah. They're either fast or slow. They're hard or soft. It's yep. binary. It's one or the other. And so. I love that about golf because yeah. it's really that way. Hard to see it sometimes because we all get caught up in our own deal. I had it going, everything going my way. Get a bad, I got a bad bounce. Yep. And that's that's you know it was such a <laughs> that's such a good thing that you learned and your dad taught you because a lot of golfers a lot they use excuses and yeah, I've seen it growing most. up. Growing up being you know in competition a lot you know in college golf and, and I tried to play. I tried for a few years to play uh, mini tour golf and stuff, and you just 
the amount of excuses you hear these guys make. It's unreal. And it was it was one thing that that really I really didn't like. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't near as as good as the people I play with, but I knew I could outgrind them. Yeah. And I knew one thing. One thing I did, and I know you're big on, is all I did was practice my short game. Yes. That is. It's, that's that is. I would spend I would spend countless hours until couldn't see anymore. You know, if I, if I could have had a light at the time, I would have I would have sat out there as long as I could, just chipping, putting. Uh, yeah. I would make I would take garbage cans. I would do everything I could just to because I knew that's where I had to that's where I had to make it up. Sure, is it, on my short game and putting, and yep. uh, it's just. Uh, See, that's the thing about that's the thing about the game of golf that applies to every golfer, professional to a beginner. You, it's not optional. You have to have a good short game mm-hmm. in order to be able to play good golf, to play better golf. Yeah, and you can sh- you can improve the most, the mostest by the fastest. Yeah. If you focus on your short game, and I'll give you a good example of the proof of that. Yeah, you love golf. You watch golf, and you don't no tell them how many shots you've seen Tiger Woods hit. Yeah, how many six iron shots of his do you remember? Not not many. Then how many putts and chips do you remember? A lot, like a million yeah. of them. Yeah, because he was the best with a wedge to get that ball in the hole. Mm-hmm. It might take skill, it might take will, it might take both of them. Yeah. But he had both. Yeah. But that's where he spent his time was scoring. Because mm-hmm. the art of the game is to score. Correct. And everybody gets caught up and they want to hit it further. They want this speed. They want this swing speed. They want this ball spin rate. They want this, that, or other. Yeah. You can either have that or you can't. Or you either will have that or you won't. That's right. But it's only going to get so much better. But on a short game, just time with it, learning how to control your ball around mm-hmm. the ground, being creative about using this wedge for that or this eight iron for that or to putt from the fringe or from 20 yards off the green or whatever it takes to get that ball in the hole in the fewest number of shots, that's the job of a competitive golfer. Mm-hmm. Most people get stuck on the driving ranges Pounding balls, yep. generally without a plan, without any knowledge, without any instruction. Yep. They're only going to get worse. You can get better in golf just by doing short game. Correct. You don't have to have instruction necessarily. You'll get better with it. Yeah. But you will get better because you'll develop touch. Because touch. touch is an acquired skill. Everybody's born with some, mm-hmm. some more than others. But the ones that work the hardest develop the best touch. Yeah. And so some of the best players in history weren't necessarily the bombers. They were the guys that really had the best touch and mm-hmm. creativity around the green. They could get the ball in the hole in the fewest number of strokes once you got in or around the green. Mm-hmm. And that applies today. Yeah. And you can be a 20 handicapper. You can be a scratch. You can be a pro. You work on it, you will get better. If yeah. you don't, you will not. Simple as that. And, and, and to me – when I when I did work on my short game all the time, because it's it just say you're working on 40, 50, 60, 70 yard shots, okay, yeah. trying to fill that distance. It still it make it made me my takeaway everything because you're still it's still part of the it's a swing it's, it's a swing yeah, and it just it got into the long game everything. And it always, I always remember, I'll never forget when I played my best golf ever. It was 2005, and I was at Delta State. And we were no more in the country, and we had some, we had some sticks. And um, that's where I sat out there, right there by the pool. We didn't, we didn't go over the Delta State golf course. We played, you know, we had, we had Sam Dunning, one of the best yeah, there is. You bet. Right there by the swimming pool, there's a little square. I don't know if you know where I'm talking yeah, about. I'm putting green, and that's where I put... I would just get boards, garbage cans, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 65. I'd have them spread out all over that that little place. And I'd drop me 100 balls there 
and just that developed me into the best I've ever ever played. I ended up winning a college tournament, shot sixty one at uh, Clarksdale Country Club. Great. Um, I won a couple MGA events that year. Lost the state open at uh, Dancing Rabbits by one, and it was all because of that sitting out there for hours on just that little bit of short game. And I just, I, it's all because it was just that first little bit of that swing. Yep. And I wasn't out there pounding drivers, seven irons, where, you know, you can get quick, which I'm quick anyway, but you know, you're not, yep. you're not honing in just a good little rhythm. Correct. And I, I think, I think that's what, uh, contribute. There's, it can, your, your golf swing can, will get better from short game up. Yeah. It'll grow into your long game. Yeah. It doesn't work inversely. It does, the long game won't help your short game, but your short game will help your long game in your motion. Yeah. It will improve that. And Trevino rightfully said years ago, and it's still true today, there's only three clubs in your bag you got to be good with. Yeah. Driver, wedge, and putter. Yeah. Now, you got to be really good with them. Yeah. But who cares if you're any good with a four iron? Yeah. You might go two weeks and not hit a four iron. Correct. You can't go two holes without one of those. Yes. I mean, you ever. You can't go a single hole without playing with one of those clubs. Correct. So who cares how many, how good you are with a four iron? It doesn't make any difference. You're not going to hit many of them. Yeah. You're going to hit a driver a bunch, and you have to drive the ball in play. Yep. You're going to have a wedge in your hand because you're going to be within – everybody is within every grain of – within 100 yards of it in regulation. Yes. Assuming you haven't hit a ball out of bounds. Yeah. So now you're within 100 yards. And it could be my, – my dad was that. He was within 100 yards in regulation. Yeah. Because he topped a drive and then scuttled his three wood down there. He's still 80 or 90 yards from the yep. green. Well, now it becomes your job to get that ball in the hole in three shots or less right yep. now. So that means get it on the green, two putt. Yeah. Might miss the green, but chip that up and get it up and get yeah. it in the hole. It's three shots or less, and there's no negotiating for that. If mm-hmm. you can't do that, you can't play. You can't Correct. improve. You're not going to lower your scores. But that's what keeps your scores. And I have people tell me all the time, tour players never make bogeys. That's not true. Yeah. They make bogeys. They don't make many. Mm-hmm. Because they know how to get that ball up and down. They understand their wedge, and they really are married to this wedge. And mm-hmm. They spent countless numbers of hours with that wedge in their hand just experimenting and being creative and playing and trying this. And and Wilson does it. Wilson's great at very creative and trying to yeah. hit this shot with a face closed or this shot with a face a little more open or raise my hands up a little higher mm-hmm. or lower my hands a little bit on this shot and see what, see what happens. Because you can't replicate on a driving range what's going to happen on a golf course. Correct. Because on a driving range, every lie is perfect. Yep. It's flat, Mm -hmm. and there's no penalty. Yep. Hit it wherever you want to. I mean, you didn't hit Mm -hmm. a good one, but you get no penalty for it. So there's no pressure on a driving range. Plus, on a golf course, once you leave a tee box, you may not get another flat lie the rest of the day. (laughs) It's a little uphill, a little downhill, Mm -hmm. a little side hill, whatever. It could be in the rough. could be on hard pan. Yep. It changes. But around the greens with those wedges, if you get creative and put it in your hand and just do it, yeah. which is what gave birth to the loop, yeah, is my unwavering belief that if you can learn to score, you can play better golf than you've ever played before, mm-hmm. and you can constantly improve. And if you're aging like me, I can't do the things I used to could do with my long game. Mm-hmm. But I can do as much or more now with my short game than I could when I was playing all the time because I work on it. Yeah. Because I I still keep a wedge in my hand and keep my putter in my hand. And I piddle and I create and I try this and I work yeah. on that. And I just encourage people. But most golf courses don't have much of a short game that replicates what you'll see on the golf course that you are going to encounter. Correct. So the problem is unless you play a lot of golf, mm-hmm. You don't get much repetition on shots that's going to come to you. Yeah. Because a, a chipping green or a putting green at a golf course is usually pretty generic. It's pretty basic. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. It's just not equal to what's going to happen on the golf course. Correct. So that's why I also say the only way to play better golf is to play a lot of golf. Yep. You're a great example. The more you play, the better you play. Yep. 
And it's because you're now used to the shots and the lies and the stances and the whatevers and all the stuff that comes up that if you haven't done it in months, mm -hmm. you don't know what to do. You don't have any recall on how yep. to hit this shot. It's, it's just part of it. But the loop, it's a six-hole deal. It's six holes. They range from 40 yards to 120 yards. Small greens, they're sort of old school sort of turtle back green yeah. where there's a lot of creativity involved in the short game where you got to hit lofted shots, you got to have lob shots and you got the bumping runners, you yeah. got everything. And it's a fantastic, peaceful, quiet place to play. We won't be the last one built here. On the loop. So is that uh that come with if you can anybody play it, or did it come with your member of it's any a, of the... It's an add-on to your membership. Add-on so to your you membership. Can, your dues are X. If you want to add the loop, it's X more. Okay. And so we, But we keep that to a minimum number. Gotcha. So that, say Rodney Boswell says, I want to join the loop. Okay. And our friend Bill Byrne did it this morning. Okay. So that I can guarantee you some privacy and some quiet. Gotcha. There's no golf courts. It's all walking. Mm -hmm. So there's no chaos. There's no tea times. There's no nothing. You can play it, and some people that are joined it use it to go play six or 12 holes one late in the afternoon. Yeah. But most people go out there just to practice. practice. That's what I was going which is, But I want you to be able to do that and have space and the peace and quiet of it. So it's really never crowded unless we're doing – or Thomas is doing, my son's doing a camp or a school or a class yeah. for kids or ladies or whatever. So it's really, we've kept it so that you could go spend all the time you want, get a lot done yeah. if you only have a short period of time because there's no one else really out there. Yeah, I, I joined, when I moved to Oxford, I, uh, I joined Tupelo Country Club because it's yeah. only 40 minutes and they, behind their range, they Got have a, a three. Yeah. That's, it was basically kind of, I guess, the same thing, but now it, it's basically used for practice. Yep. You know, and you can go out there and you can go anywhere you want and drop you a couple balls, hit a few shots, go to the next spot, you know, yep. hit, and you can, you can hit up anywhere from pretty much 200 and in at any angle. Yeah. You know, uh, and that was, that was such a good, practice facility i wish i would have had had something like that growing up growing up yeah See, i did have it wasn't uh i grew up my, my dad was a member of the country club of jackson and they had the blue nine yep. it's now that's called the cypress nine but back in the 1970s the blue nine was really for the women and the children that they didn't want on the big course gotcha that was for the for the men mm-hmm now, ladies could get on, but it was after a certain time. We couldn't get on unless we had our dad or it was after 3 or 4 o'clock. So, okay, we went with the blue nine. Yeah. And it was really just us kids. Basically, had so your own a, nine hole. We had a private nine hole golf yep. course to ourselves, and we would go round and round. David and Al and I walked that many times, seven times in a day, 63 holes in a day. Wow. Way more than once we yes. did that. No way to possibly have more fun. Did you, but did you hear what you just said? You walked it. Walked and it. And nowadays... We had to walk. I mean, I had Bobby Smith, and I'm going to get to talking about him because I love him more than yeah. any. You know, he was the greatest man. and uh, But we didn't dare step foot on a golf cart. No, no. And and it's, uh, I mean, we could we could sit and talk about how it's so much different uh, nowadays. But these kids, they, they're getting on the golf cart, and they're taking off, and I mean, obviously, I guess there's times where you could get more holes in, but just just being out there with, like, I had a buddy that was it was me and him, and that's it, we'll, I don't know how many holes we bought, like our still eighteen holes, but yep. and we'd make up holes. Sure, you know, we might take take this tee box and go to this green just yep. to make up a different different hole. Sure, uh, and we might, you know, sit around one green and and have chipping contest out there by sure. ourselves just because we loved it. Yep. So much. Yep. Uh, it, I don't see. I mean, I guess I'm, I need to get, uh, I don't, the round junior golfers, are, there's a couple good ones in Clarksdale. Uh, there's one boy, his name is uh, Reed Chapman, and he, his golf swing is the most beautiful golf swing I've seen in a long time. I got a video of it on my phone. Do you? It's great. It, great golf swing. And uh, I know his dad well, but he's, he's, there, he's a big baseball player too. Yep. And uh, so I think you know, 
I think I, I mean it looks like he loves golf more than anything. According to his parents, which I've talked to both of them on yeah. the phone. And yeah, I hope to see him sometime in the next yeah. few weeks. Um, they want me to take a look at him, and yes. I want to see him. And I've, the video well, swings like it's beautiful, isn't it? Good as you can do it. I, you know? I mean, I saw it. I, I probably saw it three years ago. I just saw this kid on the range when I went to Clarksdale one day. Yep. And you know, when you see a golf swing, you instantly you know. know. Yeah. And I was like, man, who is that? Went over and talked to him, and he was just the politest little kid. And yeah. like, you, you love golf? I, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this and that gave him a few encouraging words. And then this year, I go, and he's on the range. And he, I was like, man, this kid's going to be something. If he wants to be, if he That's wants it. to be. That's it. And I feel like he does. Now, I know he's playing baseball, with which is, look, I love the aspect of playing sports and baseball. Too. I loved baseball. I, I was just too. like you. I, uh, I loved it. All the way up, and I played it all the way up until uh, after, till tenth grade, and that's when I made made my choice. That you know, golf. That's what I wanted. Yeah. I wanted to do, and I wanted to play college golf. Uh, but the baseball helped me so much. Uh, just being competitive, being out there, you know, just just that competitiveness. Yeah. Of and then being athletic. Yep. One of the greatest tips Robert Pennell ever gave me was just be athletic, man. Just be just an athlete. Be, just be an athlete. Yep. Grind it out. Yep. And it, whether you, you got another fundamentals, but but just get out there and be athletic and hit that ball. Play this <laughs> shot in this hole the best you can. Go Correct. to the next one, do the same thing. Correct. I mean, it's just a it's the best metaphor for life of any sport there is. Yeah. They all have a lot of it in it, but there is none that tests more different things. Than golf, yeah, particularly mentally, mm-hmm. physically. No doubt. Physically, the other sports test more, but this is doesn't test none. It tests yeah. a lot of athletic, physical gifts, but it tests you mentally and your fortitude and your ability to to be calm under pressure and to think independently. And I tell parents all the time: if the one thing you got to learn to teach your children, if golf is their endeavor. You need to leave them alone and let them learn how to make decisions on their own. You mm-hmm. can't tell them to hit a seven iron or a, particularly if you don't know. But yeah. you got they have to make decisions because ultimately if they choose golf as a competitive endeavor, hey, look, it's you against it's you get to have to make the cost, not your caddy. Yeah. You might talk to your caddy, but at the end of the day, the player's gonna pull the trigger. Yeah. So you have to be able to learn to think independently and be able to live with your decisions because you're going to have another one coming. Yeah. So you have to you have to know you. You get to know yourself, the man in the mirror. Golf will prove out everything in you, good and bad. You'll know yes. a lot about yourself through golf more than any other athletic endeavor, in my opinion. No doubt. Uh, uh, you know, I, how I grew up, and was shaped in golf. I want, I want to kind of go over it with you, and because it, it's going to get into uh, um, the difference in gambling golf and tournament golf. Yeah. All right. Because I, you know, I, I like to gamble on the golf course. Yeah. There's no no hiding that or whatever. Is it? Uh, do anybody that um, is trying to make it? To co- to play in college or on tour, do I think they need to be gambling on the golf course? No, because it's so it's so different. Correct. It's so different. So, but anyway, I'll tell you kind of how I was shaped and molded, and then how you think. Uh, just kind of your opinion. But anyway, Bobby Smith, uh, I was kind of like you. Uh, picked up a golf club. My dad had some, and he was a bowler. He's actually in the Mississippi Hall of Fame. Is he bowling. Really? He played on uh, bowled on the PBA tour, and he but he had some old clubs that he had just picked up. And same thing, I picked it up, and just I think I was around ten years old, and and just and I could I just bam the first one was just so good. And then I go over to my buddy's house who lived on the country club, and they're having the little junior club championship. Uh, and his dad's like, "Well, you want to go play with them?" You know, my, they were members. I wasn't. And I was like, oh, man, sure, sure. And I win it. And I couldn't get the trophy because I wasn't a member. But I remember that 
that uh, day of like, man, this, this, this is this is the game, yeah. and uh, so a little bit later on, uh, Bobby Smiths, I go out and start seeing Bobby Smiths, and one of the greatest of all time. I never he this just would sit on there, and I I feel like you and him have a lot of the same qualities of teaching, of of the old school, and yeah. it, and I still believe in that that way. But he'd sit on his little his bucket, have his cigar, and he 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 marked his own range balls, the little red little yeah. red thing, and he'd set that range ball, and he he'd have that line kind of out to the right, and it didn't hit the inside of that ball, boy, you know, and just sit there, yeah. maybe just just but he hit the inside of that ball, boy, and just just I mean just hit hundreds of balls that way, yeah, and uh, so finally I I get to probably around fourteen fifteen years old. And I'm I'm getting pretty good now, and my dad knows I want you know need some competition. Okay, there's nice Clarksdale. I had, we had one other kid, yeah. And um, so the older men, uh, you know they all had they had they had great golf games there and on Wednesday, sure. or Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's always great golf games. And so he went out and talked to some old men. It's like, can my son play with y'all and uh. Okay, he's talked to him. Of course, I will. If y'all are betting, I've, I'm gonna, I'll back him. Uh, and but he just wanted me. He wanted, he wasn't a golfer. He right. didn't know, but he knew how much I loved it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And he knew well. He needs competition. Yeah. He needs competition. There's. Uh, so there wasn't any other yeah, kids to play with the grown ups. Kind of grown ups. So, but they, they took me in. Yeah. They took me in, and I got out there, up in the mix of of these older men who were pretty good golfers. And anyway, I mean, the competition, and I'm starting to win, and I'm like, I'm winning money, you know, at that age. So it was, a, I'm like, oh, I kind of like this, yeah, you know. And uh, so it kind of built me to, that's how I, how I started playing golf. And that's how I, the pressure or whatever, it was all about trying to win money. Yep. You know, which it, it can be at, at a country club because there's there's everybody goes out there. You know, you have some bets. Some bets are bigger. Some bets are smaller. But I developed uh, that style of golf from early on. You know, I don't think they, they they weren't trying to do that. It's just something I like. I like to do. I like that feeling. I could get that feeling. Every single hole meant something. You yeah. know, instead of. Uh, of just going out there and practice. I, I, I was able to get into a situation that you can't get into much unless you can get into uh, con, uh, contending in a tournament. Yeah. That's the only time you're going to feel that that yeah. type of pressure. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, and they took me in, and so that just over over the years, that's that's just how I, how I was I was brought up on the golf course. Yeah. And and. I, I wanted to talk about that because uh, I, I don't think it's a um, it's not necessarily a good thing in golf. Right. It's not, but it's out there. It is. It's and part of it. It's part. It's part of it. And I would never uh, any young golfer. I would always deter from that. Like if you if you want to be a tournament golfer. This is this is the way you need to go. Yeah. Now there's a lot of gambling golfers that have made it on tour, but sure. But but uh, most of them. That's not how that, they were. That's, that's not how they. That's not where they came from. That's not where they came from. It's not. Uh, and, and it because golf, a tournament golfer. Just like when I watched, because uh, I've caddied plenty of times on, on the tour and then or on uh, Q school, but just watching, it's more plotting around the golf course because you. It's stroke play and match play yep. are two different things. Entirely different things. And uh, match play is more your gambling style yep. golf. Yeah. And and stroke play is more chess. That, that's 100% right. So, and there's a lot of ways to love golf. Yeah. And a lot of different variations of some people like to walk, some people yep. like to drive, some yep. people like to, to – Play from the back tee. Some people like to play from the front yeah. tee. Some people play the ball up. Some people play it down. Some people put them all out. Some don't. Yeah. But if, in my instance, my dad was not a gambler. Yeah. His foursome, there was twenty five and fifty cent bets. Yeah. Enough to brag that I yeah. beat that guy at fifty cents. Yeah. 
and then he bought the Budweiser when it was old. Yeah. It was one beer piece, and they went home. And the big gambling game, the grown-ups at our club, at the country club, were yeah. the people you knew, Bob Travis and Grady McCool. And yeah. There wasn't a bigger gambling game in Mississippi than them. Yeah. They never invited me in. I played golf with them, but not in their group. Yeah. I would play with them individually or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I liked tournament golf. Yeah. I liked testing me. Yeah. And the only way to replicate that is to play golf – Exactly like you would in a tournament. You play the right. ball same conditions. Play from the tips. You put them out. You play it down. A water hazard it is this penalty. Out of bounds is that penalty. And that you do it if you ground your club in a bunker. It's a penalty shot. You got yeah. to put them all the way out. You can't. Well, I'm gonna hit this again or what? Yeah. None of that. That you have to replicate that. That you condition yourself to the conditions of competition. Mm -hmm. So that's how we were raised to play. That so when we played. That's how we did it. Yeah. And we didn't know any different. Bob Travis, when I was 13 years old, would come pick me up at my house at 5.30 or 6 in the morning, just me and him. Yeah. And we put one foot against the back cut line of the tee box. Mm -hmm. Now, he hit it 280 yards at 13. Yeah. I couldn't do that. And I'd say, can I play up there? He goes, no, we're playing the whole golf course. Yeah. All of it. They built all of it. We're playing all of it. Yeah. And we would play. And then... All of a sudden, he would flip a switch and goes, well, let's play from this tee, from 2 tee to 12 green. Yeah. And see who shoots the lowest score. Yeah. And you figure out how to get there, and I'll figure out how to get there. Mm -hmm. And then we go from 13 tee to 7 green. We play cross country. It yeah. was about making a score. Yep. The best you could make it on a hole that just didn't look like a hole, really. It yeah. was just learning how to play the game to Correct. get the ball in the hole. I particularly liked the just the singular challenge of me beating that golf course that day. Yeah. Not so if I if you and I are playing a metal play tournament. Yeah. You had nothing in it to me. Mm -hmm. You had nothing. You were my friend. Yeah. I'm not really. I'm not playing you. I'm playing the golf course. It's me against this golf course, and we're gonna add them up, and mine's gonna either be lower or higher than yours. Yeah. We're gonna be friends. But in match play, yeah, it changes that. It becomes you against you. I mean, it's Correct. me against you. Yep. Me against you and I against those two guys. So now it becomes adversarial. And then if there's money on the line, there's always a factor of the rules. Yeah. That's yep. broached or breached yeah. or bumped up against two. Yeah. Metal, I don't like any of that. Yeah, I don't. I don't want any of that. I yeah. don't like it in the game. It's not yeah. my preference. I got it. It's yeah. out there, and people yeah. do it. So I don't care. Yeah, it's just not the best way to get better. Doesn't mean you can't get better yeah. doing that. I just don't think it's the best long range, hundred percent way to really hone you and your skill to play a golf course and a hole and a shot to your best to prove it to you. Correct. That hole can't beat me. It just lays there and just lets me have my way with it. Yeah. Am I man enough to do it? Yeah. Sometimes I am. Sometimes I'm not. I can live with it either way. But I didn't want to feel like I had to do something to beat you. Yeah. I did my best. You do your best. Where do they add up? Yeah. We shake hands. David Allen and I today are the best of friends. Yeah. We fought so many times on golf courses in playing around, sometimes in comp many times in competition. But it was never adversarial between David and I. Yeah. He, he was at prep. I was in Manhattan. He was at Mississippi State. I was at Ole Miss. So we were always on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. But because we both understood the inherent real essence of competitive golf is you against that golf course. Yep. Can you control you? If I can, I'm probably going to beat you. Yeah. If I can't, I'm probably not going to. And then if I didn't, I go to work on that. Yeah. To get better. But you can only replicate that by doing that on your – that's how you do it. That's how yeah. you play golf. And and a lot of people don't want golf. They want it to be easy. Yeah. They want to play it up or they want to have a leaf rule or a root rule or – a gimme's inside yeah. the leather and a breakfast ball off the first tee. Well, once you broach one rule, you've broken the rules. Yes. You're no longer playing real golf. Correct. To me. 
I'm really literal about that. Mm -hmm. You pick up one putt, rules are over for the day. Yeah. You didn't like that? Well, I don't like my lie. I'm moving it. Yeah. Well, now, here we go. Now we... No, this is a blank canvas. We're all playing it the same way. I still love it most that way. Yeah. I don't get to do that anymore because that part of my golf is in the past. But that was my real love of it, and I think that's what helped get me past, helped me be a better player in college, get me through tour school, get on the tour. Yeah. I, I think it was that push that I could see it was just really my, it was just me. 100%. I didn't have to beat Rodney Boswell. I either yeah. did or I didn't. I just shot the best score I could shoot. Sometimes it's better and sometimes it's not. Yeah. And if I and if I gave up or gave in mm -hmm. during a round and lost, that's on me. Yeah. If you just played better, I'm ha I'm literally happy for you. Yeah. Good for you. You had a great day on the golf course. Mm -hmm. Mine was okay. Yeah. But your 71's lower than my 73. Yeah. But that's that's my love for it. But I understand that there are other ways to love it. I yeah. just and I don't think kids playing that playing gambling or playing match play yeah. is the best teacher, hundred percent, or the best predictor of their abilities because you're not they're not tested the same. Yeah, if you always test the same, you find out. Yeah, and that's that's why I wanted to say it because. I want to help kids. I yep. want. I, I've been there. I'm. I'm doing, giving you a life experience yeah. of how I played the game. Yeah. Okay. Was it, it? You know. Was it the right way? No. But it's how I. I yeah. played. How I. Yeah. I got into it. I love it. I you still sure? love it. So it wasn't but, wrong. Yes. But so I'm trying to tell these kids that are out there that are wanting to be successful at golf. Okay. Because there's not. You think about it in Mississippi. Yes. We probably have, I mean, right now, if you just had to guess of kids from 10 years old to 17, okay? Yeah. Right now in Mississippi, and it's probably a pure guess. You might know a little bit, but 10 to 17-year-old, how many right now are going to sleep saying, I want to be on the PGA Tour? Ooh, less than a dozen? That's what I would, I mean, that's probably, probably. my first. Less than a dozen. Maybe more than that because they got girls now. So it yeah. may be two dozen. Yeah. Across the state that this eat and sleep and strive for that. Yeah. So how great a training was it for me to play the very longest that golf course could make? Yeah. As a thirteen year old against a, a grown man, my hero, made me play with my foot against that cut. Mm hmm And we played it down and we put it out. Every hole that we yep. played the hole, that's how we played it. And that's the ultimate challenge is that's the toughest it can be. Yep. Can I overcome that? Can I yeah. develop a skill to play that golf course that way? And if I can, then I can do it in competition. Correct. And so when I get through, if I, if I can't reach some greens in two with a three wood, that means I got to get better with my three wood or my driver. I got to yeah. find a way to hit it further or higher. Those little things come up as you learn to do that, and where you where you're lacking helps build your progress. But as long as you like kids riding in a cart, yeah, this is my this is my observation. Kids hop in a cart now. After four or five holes, they're bored. Yes, and it's too easy to take a ride and go home, mm -hmm. go to the clubhouse. Yep, if you're walking and you're out on number five. You ain't walking in. Yeah. And you're going to finish. You're going to finish it. Yeah. So walk mm -hmm. and go finish what you started. But one little distraction, you're in a golf cart, bloop, off they go. Yeah. Hit the street and head back to the clubhouse, and they're gone. And I think a golf cart's a killer of that. Yeah. So I tell kids, get your footprints off that driving range and get your footsteps on that golf course. Mm -hmm. I want to see your footsteps. Yeah. I don't want to see your footprints on the driving range. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I, I want to see you playing, because it does. Playing golf makes you a better golfer. You got to do it a lot. Yes. You do need to practice, but that's what practice was for. And my pro, as kid would say, oh, you go play nine holes right now, and you come back in with your stats. How many fairways? How many greens? How many bunkers? How many putts? Something in that. Nine holes, no matter what you shot, wasn't really 
great. Correct. You didn't drive it. You missed three fairways or whatever. So now you take one hour and you go practice just that one thing. Then you go play nine more holes. Yep. And do the same thing. What was it on that nine that wasn't as sharp as it should have been? Well, I shot 34. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Did you, yeah. Did you three putt once? Yeah, or did you get it up and out of the bunker every time? No, I was 0 for 1. Yeah. We went in the bunker. Yeah. An hour. Or you miss one three-footer, go make 100 of them. Mm-hmm. You can't get better training than that because it's real life. I mean, it's, it happened right then. And so it makes you pay attention to where you were weak. Mm-hmm. Even if you shot 33 or 4 or 32 on, the, on that nine holes, something wasn't exactly what you needed to be. Correct. Like you hit a bad seven iron. You hooked a seven iron. You got it up or down, <laughs> good for you, but should you miss a green with a seven iron off a par three, off a tee? Mm-hmm. It's a perfect line. It's a perfect yard. Should you do, go ahead and go do that and do that and do that and do that. And now you're playing and you're implementing your practice while you're in between your playing, but with a focus on something specific, not just – one of just grab any random of your 14 clubs. You go to the one that wasn't sharp on that nine holes and you hone that. And I guarantee you that next nine holes, that club's going to be better than it was on the first nine. Correct. And so now you've, you've gotten better and yet you've played 18 holes keeping a score. Mm-hmm. So you get both best. I still think it's the best training in the yeah, world. Yeah. But the main thing that, that out of this whole thing that you said that people won't do. Is if it's just nine holes, or just say you want to do six holes, it's fine. Six holes, you know, playing golf and putting a score to it, a correct score, a correct find rules. your tee box. Yep. It doesn't matter what tee box. One it don't is. care. Don't care. Find your tee box. You play the ball if it's able to. You know, play the ball down. You count every stroke until the ball goes into the hole. Yep. And you go to the next hole. Correct. And people will not do that. No. The, the ones, you know, the ones that want to get better, yes, they will. But they're still, they're still but it like weeds 90%. Out. I mean, I, I see it all the time. You Clarksdale, we go and they play, they play the ball up. I will say the older the older guys, the ones I grew up playing with, the ones that have, have are 65 and older now, yeah. they play the ball down. And put the ball out. They've moved up a tee appropriate yeah. to their age, but they still play golf. And and it bothers. Look, when I first started, that was one good thing. A good thing out of out of my men, we played the ball down and we putted the ball out, yeah. and uh, and we played the back tee. They're playing. They now they have moved up to the to the white tees, and and it's it's younger guys, you know. And I'm like, no and, one plays from the back tees anymore. N- nobody. Like it's fresh yeah. turf back there, yeah. right? <laughs> Correct. So on number one tee at Clarksdale, not you don't. No one hits from right by in front of the clubhouse porch like we all did. No, nope. no, they're up there, and that's just a that is a a fine spot right there. Oh, a little it's bit one of raised, the coolest. It's yeah. great, it's right behind right. the patio. It's just awesome. I, I think I remember as a kid. Okay, I'm pretty sure, and you'll you'll know right. At the, uh, we were having, I think it was the state open, I believe, and I'd heard. Here comes Rhett Crowder. Here comes uh, Mike Taylor. And I'm pretty sure you came and played with them that day. I'm trying to think who else. You got Rhett Crowder, Mike Taylor. Um, There was another. I'm almost positive you were there, but there was somebody else. And I never forget. I watched all 18 holes of y'all playing. Uh, And I can't remember. I think somebody else came in to play just because y'all were were all playing. I don't know if you remember that. but I'll, I'll never forget. I used to love to go um, watch some of the older men that that were good. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I remember I would be playing, and I would I would slow down on purpose, so maybe they'd catch me and ask me, or just hey, you know, you want to come? Just you want to come? Or just acknowledge or something. The, yeah. the better golfers out there. Yeah. Uh, because we we like I told you we had some pretty decent old. Remember Rocky McBride? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he 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 was a good one. Um, Real good player. Yeah. Uh, uh, Paul Lyles was a good one. I used to watch. Uh, yeah. T- trying to think. I mean, we we had some we had some 
decent little golfers. Uh, when I was Coleman was a good junior player. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. There's just been there's been some. Yeah. It's a great golf course. It, I, uh, that'll get me right into this. So I've always argued uh, that I, I'm Clarksdale the layout and has to be i would put it up and i guess maybe i'm being biased but and i like all the golf delta golf courses i like them all but i think i think if i had to rank and i'm talking about delta clarksdale greenville greenwood cleveland i mean there's a few other towns but i i I consider that the core yeah it is and i just think clarksdale the layout and everything, I would I would put it up if you had to rank them. Yeah, would you? Would. would you? I would. Okay, and I have a fondness for it too. And I yes. won the state open in '92 there. Okay, but maybe that was the year because I would have been that would have been nine, ten years old. Yeah, uh, but but I can't played remember. a practice round with um, Coleman's daddy, Mister Connell, okay. and Charlie Connolly, and Coleman and I played. I got you. Okay, but but I just loved I love yeah. everything about yeah about the place. But the piece of ground is the most interesting. Yes. It's got the most, it's not elevated, but it has elevation in it. Correct. The others just don't. don't. They're, they're pure flat. Pure delta. flat with push-up greens. We'll put, where Clarksdale has motion in the ground. Especially on that backside. And if there's better soil anywhere on a golf course, I've not been on it. Yeah. I mean, when you take a divot, it's black. Yes. I mean, it's rich. It's, it's ice cream dirt. You can actually smell how good the dirt yes. is. But... I think it's because it's interesting because of the topography in it. That yeah. It moves up and down some, and it curves. You get side hill down. It's stuff that you don't get anywhere else except an occasional mound on a, on a hole. Correct. Doesn't mean it's better or worse. I just prefer it better. Gotcha. But I also admit my bias toward yes. it because I had some success on it. I, my fondness for Coleman and his family. Yes. I just love the conditions of that golf course seem to be the most consistent mm-hmm. in my lifetime. It's always yeah. all of those are good, well yes. maintained golf courses. Greenville's always good. Greenwood's always good. Correct. Clarksdale's always good. Cleveland. Cleveland's always good. Yes. So there's always been a good commitment to mm-hmm. quality of the of the conditions. It just I just prefer it. Yeah. Well, I've had that. I've had that argument with a few of my buddies. You know, we, we'll have oh, yeah. ar- arguments. In, well, uh, it's chocolate or vanilla. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Look, we all love ice cream, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> you want that? I want this. Yeah. No one's right or wrong, or you can both be wrong at the same time, or right at the same time. Correct. No Correct. big deal. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> oh man. Well, you know, as always, I got to do a little. Uh, a little. I'm gonna give a few football games, and I just want to know who you like. You got we it. We got it. We got. You know, I. I mean, I love football. I know it. I know and, you do. And uh, so we just. We're gonna. I, I gotta throw it in there. So we're just gonna start off. Uh, let's just start off with uh, Mississippi going to Arkansas. Mississippi's favored by seven points. And and I mean, I know you know a little football, but if you just if you had to pick. Uh, you know what? When, when I wouldn't give of, up seven. I want my rebels, but I don't yeah. want to give away seven. You don't want to give that away game's, seven. That game's decided by four points or less every yeah. year. It seems like, but you, you, who knows? Yeah, who but, knows? But it, it, but if I was a betting man, yeah. which I'm not, yeah, I wouldn't give up seven. Okay, so we, we you, you like seven? I'm. Yeah. How about you, you know, on that one? Hundred percent. I'm with you. I, if I, I I'm taking. Give me seven points. At you got to go to Arkansas. They've been playing decent. Yeah, uh, we always struggle uh, for why, whatever why, reason. It, it's it's just fascinating to me that you know what odds maker uh, thinks we're seven points better at Arkansas. But so hey, give me seven. We never know. Yeah, Ole Miss never might know. go in there and blow them and out. I, I actually hope they do. <laughs> yes, correct. But if I was putting money on it, I'd say give me Arkansas on seven. Yeah, I mean oh. I got twenty points last week with Oklahoma. I mean hey, I mean I, I I, I, they're not that good, but. 20 points in SEC. I was like, I on. take it. Yeah. Uh, you got Vandy, Vanderbilt going to Auburn, and Auburn's minus seven. Which is another crazy one. Yeah. I mean, for um, for that that game to be that odds, I'd want Vandy. I'm I right there with you. I think that's a lot. I mean, they, they're playing better. Auburn's not as bad as their record. Yes. They have a bad quarterback. Correct. In my opinion. Yep. I think 
in a game like this, the separator, who has the best quarterback, it's not even close. Yeah. Vandy Pavia is a stud college quarterback. I think Auburn's defensively, they're way better than is Vanderbilt. But the decider is you got a way better quarterback. Correct. And he'll be able to find a way to score. Yeah. And, and Auburn struggles to even find a way to score unless they're back. Yeah. Goes crazy like he did last week, which I guess Correct. he's obviously he's capable. Capable of. So. Yeah. I'm 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 right there with you. Look, uh, you got to prove it to me. Yep. Give me give me seven points, which I like dogs. Yeah. Auburn, look, look, we both love Frosty. Uh, love him. You know, and, and pull uh, for him. Pull for him. I hate. I hate hearing the stuff I hear. Me too. Uh, so I, I, I want him. I, I want him to go in there and blow, you know blow him out and get things going. Hopefully he he is, but he, to me we both on the same page if he doesn't have a quarterback. Yep. Uh, but hey, give me seven, and then like, and we'll see what happens. Let's see what happens. See what yeah. happens. Uh, then we got Texas A and M going to South Carolina, and South Carolina's minus two and a half. Who who comes up with it? What is it? What is that? <laughs> I I don't know, but these were three games that I picked out for me and you to talk about. That the line seems so weird, Ooh. and and you know, I I don't I don't understand. So give me A and M and the points. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's on the road, but South Carolina is erratic. They're yep. not terrible, correct? And they can beat people. Yeah, I don't think they can beat these people. Yeah. I think they're pretty good this I, year. I think I think Elko's sort of got things going his way yeah. now. It, he's not there yet, but I yeah. think he's flipped it. It looks like they're getting Correct. they're getting better. I'm not sure South Carolina's getting better, and I just don't think they can beat these people. I yeah. just I just they got better athletes. Although South Carolina's got yeah. great athletes, yeah, and, they and, do. and it's a it's a great atmosphere, tough place to play. It is, and and if you you know. If you get there and turnovers happen and the crowd stays in it, yes, yep. 100%. But Texas A&M, is, to me, is a better football team. So if they go there and this coach has them prepared, you know, hey, and I get a few points, oh, I'll, I'll take that. Anything can happen. We, we, Anything. That's, that's, the, that's it, betting. And we, got, and we don't have <laughs> enough history to know how good Mike Elko is. Yeah. Beamer seems to be just an okay college coach. You know, he's not great. I don't think he's bad. I think he's okay. Yeah. I think Elko's got better horses in the barn. Yeah, no and doubt. And they can make all the noise they want, Williams Bryce. It don't compare to what they play in front of at home. Yeah. I mean, you can't make enough noise mm. in Columbia, South Carolina, that they make in College Station. You can't, correct. I mean, you can't even think about it. So the noise ain't going to bother them. Mm -hmm. It's just whether or not they play good on the road. Yeah. You know, but I just, again, if I'm a betting man, yeah. give me A&M and the points. Yeah. And a, against South Carolina, I got it. I'll take it. Yeah. Correct. We'll see. Correct. Well, we're going to wrap this thing up. But, you know, main thing, we just, we just uh, you know, just having a good conversation of, uh, about golf, about Mississippi. We, we both love Mississippi. But to the golfers out there, basically – Get out if you want to succeed in golf, and we both kind of agree on this. Get out there and play play golf the correct way. Yes, play golf the correct way. Yep. Learn how to practice, and and you're going to get better. And you seek some instruction. Seek some instruction. Make sure you're guided along the way. You yep. don't have to. The high speed cameras, while they're great, they've also caused trouble. One hundred percent. All these launch monitors, they help in some way, but they've also caused trouble. Yep. At the end of the day, in Mississippi, we have better courses than we've ever had. Yep. We have better instruction than we've ever had. Our golf programs at the major university level are exceptional. Our junior colleges are exceptional. They perform great. Opportunities for boys and girls for college scholarships in golf are amazing how many there are. Yes. You can get them if you dedicate to the game, and you'll never – be sorry you chose golf yes, ever. ever. Play I mean, it forever. Forever. You just won't. You'll be sorry if you don't. Yeah. Because you're gonna wake up and be forty, and you know, your buddies are playing golf, and you try to take it up, and you're terrible, and you won't like it. You may not do it. Yeah. That's because you're sorry you didn't do it when you were younger and could have. Just correct. But if you pick it up now, young, and play golf, and play with people who like to play the game, and if you can find 
someone with some experience to help guide you around and show you how golf works and what the protocols are and all the stuff that we go through, how to keep a handicap and then how mm-hmm. to lower your handicap. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you this with my last. This is another yeah. one of my dad's things. Gotcha. So, I became way better than my dad early. Yeah. And so my dad's a 14 handicap, and so I'm a scratch. So we would play, and so my dad said, here's what we're going to do. I'm a 14 handicap from that tee. That's where I'm playing. Mm -hmm. You're a scratch from that tee. That's where you're playing. And I get a dot on the 14 toughest holes. Mm -hmm. I don't play the ball down. I improve my line wherever I want to. You play it down. Yep. So you're playing it down. I take gimmies in the leather. Yeah. You put them out. Gotcha. We're going to play a match. My par is 86 because yep. I'm a 14. It's par mm-hmm. 72 course. That's my par. Your par is 72. Yep. We're going to play a match just like that. Now you got a competitive match. I got a competitive match, and it helps my dad who could not beat me physically. Yeah. But because golf allows a handicap system mm-hmm. to allow that – person to compete with a better player like he could do the same thing with jack nicholas yes and he would say that i could play jack nicholas golf i might beat him because i get handicap and yeah if he has a bad day and I have a good day i can beat him yeah but if we don't have a handicap i i can play as good as i want him as bad as he wants i'll never beat him yeah so we would play matches that way simply for bragging rights yes but he knew how he so his and his goal was so 86, if he shot 87, he'd come over and tell my mom he was, he was one over par. Yeah. Yep. And he was mm-hmm. one over his par. Yep. I shoot 74, I'm two over. He beat me. Yeah. Yep. What am I, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> yep. it's, it's true. Correct. I beat him by 14 <laughs> shots, but he beat me. Yep. Because of the handicap or whatever. Yeah. So it's it's a... It's a great game that way. Yeah. That's just how I was taught by my dad, who was old school. But it was another great lesson. It's the only sports you can do that. In. You I can think. do that. Like a bowling, uh, yeah, bowling, you can get handicapped. Yeah. Uh, but besides trying to think of what are you going to go shoot hoops with Michael Jordan? Yeah. No. Play like, tennis with anybody? Play like baseball said, with anybody? Like he said, can I go play tennis with Bjorn Borg? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. Can I stand in the batter's box against Sandy Koufax? Yeah. No. Can I play golf with Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas and have a competitive uh, possibility? Correct. Yes. Correct. It's the only one, and it travels with you forever. Yeah. I just love that about the game. Yeah. And, and I do think people should establish a handicap by the rules and then have a goal to try to lower that, but use correct. that as their basis. So if you're 14 and you shoot 82, you can't go home, mate. You can't leave the course fussing and no. pitching that you played bad. You were actually four under your par. Correct. You had a great day. So the total of what they shot sounds like 82 sounds high to them. Yeah. Because it's, he's using it against your par. But if he used it against his own par, he would feel entirely different about his own game. Yeah. It's a it's a great it's a great thing about golf. I just love it. I, I mean I tell people all the time, don't be don't be stupid. Yeah. You're 85. You're 13. Yeah. You shot 84. You're one under. I know, but I tripled 18. I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. No. I, you shot. You were one under. Yeah. That's the same as me shooting 71. I love 71, but I was one under. What yeah. am I supposed to do? Correct. I couldn't come home shooting 71 and bitch in my house. No. My father <laughs> sent me right out that door. <laughs> uh, no stuff. doubt. No appreciate doubt, you having man. me, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank appreciate you so you much. Golf. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We're gonna keep doing it. You know, like I said, we're the, it's the boys' brand. That's who we are. Just the boys. We like yep. to get out on the golf course, have a good time. We want it to keep going in Mississippi because we love Mississippi, and uh, we're gonna do it again. I love promise it. you. Come we're gonna anytime. do it again. Thank you so much. You bet. Always yes, good sir. to see you, pal. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>